What's going on everyone? Mohawk Matt once again bringing you some fantastic humans in the science and technology realm of the Navy and the Marine Corps. Here we go. Today I have actually got Dr. Waleed Barnawi. Waleed, what's happening? What's up, man? Hey. Just chilling. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. That's actually, I love your shirt. It's fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. My wife picked it out. Oh, that, that's what wives are for, right? They're, I mean, they do a lot more than that. Absolutely. For sure. Yes, yes. So let that be on the yeah, record. Yes, that's on the record for sure. But I, I would have no style without my wife for oh, sure. Yeah, same here. Definitely. So Waleed here is actually the cyber dude. Yeah, that's official title, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's on my placard and everything. Most definitely. So he does a lot of things in the cybersecurity realm inside the Department of the Navy and really focuses on the Marine Corps. Yep, yep. So a, a lot of focus on uh, Marine Corps, uh, Expeditionary Navy, as well as the Special Operating Forces as well. D any dude that kind of within the whole construct that kind of has to lug everything on their back. Yes. Uh, so that's, those are the kind of the guys I'm trying to help out. It's a lot of gear. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, they, they let me know. So uh, <laughs> a lot of their thing is uh, make it light. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're working on something for you, it's like that, hey, it's only five pounds in the lab, but it adds, yeah. they're, they're already wearing 75 yeah. pounds. Right, right, absolutely. So yeah. that's a lot of weight. Yes, yes, yes. So Wally, you're, you're the cyber dude, which is like this official cyber dude of the Navy and Marine Corps, right? Yep. What about the little cyber guy? Like, how, where were you before? How did you get to where you are now? Uh, yeah, so um, so in, in terms of my, my background, uh, actually, I, I have sort of a non-traditional background how I got here. Okay. I was actually uh, in school. I, I got a bachelor's and master's in civil engineering. Wow. But somehow my, my boss, uh, research boss, like convinced me into this cool side, side part, like earthquake engineering. He's like, oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be big. I'm like, all right, well, I need a job. So uh, it's important. Yeah, so he uh, convinced me to do this work in control theory. So I learned a lot about uh, building uh, microcontrollers, electrical engineering, all kinds of stuff, and I took it with me into my masters, and uh, and learned stuff that you wouldn't normally learn as like a, a civil engineer. Okay. So and uh, that kind of helped set me up uh, to get the, eventually the job at the Department of the Navy. Um, so it was actually I graduated in 2008, which was a booming year in terms of the economy. Not really. It was a great <laughs> recession. Uh, and apparently there wasn't a lot of civil engineering uh, firms that wanted to hire a kid with no experience who knew more about how to develop microelectronics than actually buildings. Huh. Uh, however, I was very lucky. Uh, there, was a, there was a couple of folks, uh, Mark Jansen, Diana Londergan, down in Charleston, who uh, took an interest in me and realized that, hey, this kid actually knows something in the uh, double E and some bits of computer science realm. So let's bring them on board and, and see how it goes. So okay. uh, that's how I got started with the department in the Navy. And I, I worked down in Charleston for a number of years before uh, someone at, at um, someone up here at, at O&R took an interest in me. And okay. um, Dave Trimper was his name. He's actually, he's gone on and doing great things at, uh, at the OSD level, uh, excuse me, Office of Secretary of Defense level. Sure. Um, but uh, he brought me up, said, hey, give this a try, uh, see if you like it, and uh, I did, did a detail for him for a year, and a permanent gig came up to be the cyber dude, and uh, right. that's how I got here. All right, we got to get cyber dude on your cards if it's not already. That's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be right there in, in small print. Perfect. Small print, make a big print. That, you know, you're right. You're right. right. You're a cyber dude. That's right. I'll, I'll just put my, my name in like, you know, yeah, eight I mean, that, eight that's point what everyone, or, everyone in college in like computer science, they like they they want to become the cyber dude. That's what right. do you want to do when you grow up? Cyber dude. Cyber That's dude. what I want right and there. And the back will be like the dude abides. Exactly. The dude <laughs> abides. There you go. So Wally, tell us about what is the Navy and Marine Corps kind of up to in the cyber realm, and kind of what I mean. Let's back it up a little. Let's back it up just a little bit. What is cyber? Like, what is what does that mean? What does that all entail? Yeah, I think that's a really a great question because I think cyber is thrown around all over the place, and people see like little uh, commercials and see blue beams and stuff going on. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, that's cyber. Anything blue is cyber. Uh, you know, the way I look at cyber is like it's cyber touches everything. Um, you know, it's, it's cyber. It's uh, it's it's your phone. You yes. know, it's your it's your social media account. It's uh, it's your smart TV, it's microwaves, your microwave, your uh, refrigerators. You know, you see all these commercials, like all of that's cyber, because all of that's kind of connected. And I guess how I would kind of describe 
cyber uh, in the world, it's sort of like a big hotel, right? It's like yeah. this big hotel, but it's not centrally managed. So like some parts of it is managed by this group over here. So you get some parts that are janky, <laughs> some parts that are like Bates Motel, real <laughs> shady places. That's like the dark webs. And you sure. get some places that are, are, are you know, super nice and swanky. Uh, and, and that's all of it. And like a hotel, you have doors all in between them uh, and hallways. And then you also have doors, that's like some of those hotels where you get those weird doors that connect to each other. So oh, yeah. And the truth is, we lock some of those doors. Sometimes we don't lock those doors. And that's where some of the problems happen with cyber because you don't really know who your neighbor is sometimes. Sometimes it's someone nice. Sometimes it's someone that's not nice. And sometimes you get a really trusting person way down the hall who keeps their door in between the two rooms open. And so some person walks in there who shouldn't be, and they can kind of run through the rooms while you might have your front door locked. And now they just snuck in through one of these side rooms. And that's kind of sort of the danger when you have with cyberspace. It's, so it's all okay. connected. Um, but that's, that's what I try to do. I try to look at what are those doors how do we kind of make sure that the right locks and the right permissions are there so that the right people are talking to one another? And you do a lot of that focused on marine expeditionary. Yeah, so, and, and, it, and it's an interesting problem, right? Because I, as a typical cybersecurity problem, which is the confidentiality, the integrity, mm -hmm. and the availability piece that everybody in the world, big ships have yes. it, data centers have it. Uh, the problem with those expeditionary forces is that they have to have it, but they only have so much room. And all of those cybersecurity solutions sometimes require a lot of big, bulky uh, power to do it. And cooling or, or fans and cooling all that Cooling fan exercise. size and all that stuff. So how do you stuff 10 pounds of poo in a five pound sack? Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's sort of the, the general problem that I, I try to figure out. So I like to look at solutions that or can give you some of that security, but at much, much smaller instances, yeah. which I think is not only important for the Marine Corps, um, but also if we figure it out for them, a lot of chances are that's technology that can later on be applicable in the commercial industry. So it, I, I look at what I'm doing as almost a gateway, as a, as a, as a gateway to potentially helping uh, the broader, uh, the broader, broader uh, audience. That's fantastic. So some of the things that have been trending right now that I've been kind of looking at are, 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 are encryption approaches, new encryption approaches. All right. So two that are really, that I found interest in are called attribute-based encryption okay. and predicate-based encryption. So I'll, I'll use the example of the Hatfields and the McCoys. Yes. We all know the, the classic example of the Hatfield and McCoys. They don't get along, um, but occasionally they gotta have truces, right? So. You can have an attribute say Hatfield and an attribute that says McCoy. All their messages, if they tag it Hatfield, can only be read by Hatfields. And all those that tag McCoy can only be read by McCoys. Now, occasionally the leaders go, we got to stop this because we, you know, we're, we're losing too many numbers. Mm -hmm. So those guys are the leaders. So they get a special attribute called leader. So now, not only can those guys talk to each other, the Hatfields and the McCoys, yes. but if the leaders need to have a conversation without people knowing that they're conceding at all, uh, just to work out the terms and, and not get everybody spun up, they can have that uh, communication without, and even if the message gets read or gets captured by one, someone else, mm -hmm. they won't be able to decode it. And that's the cool thing about sort of the attribute-based encryption. The predicate-based encryption just encrypts the attribute, so you don't even know who exactly it is. And you can probably uh, extrapolate that to you know, naval context on, on why you might want to keep the confidentiality of something yeah. uh, locked down. So that's, that's one big thing, area that I'm looking at. Definitely, well, thank you for that uh, nice explanation, yeah. the Hatfields and McCoys, because like, I'm like, what the heck is this guy even talking about? I don't know, man. So that really helped me kind of tie those together because yeah. attributes and all those fancy cyber words. I'm like, oh, I was like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's that's yeah. a nice that's a nice representation. Thanks. Um, so what what's going on right now? Like, what are some of the things that we're focusing on inside the Navy and Marine Corps related to cyber? So one of the things that we're trying to always get a be better at is is closing the loop to figure out just where we need to plug holes. Okay. So, like I was mentioning earlier. Cyberspace is all over the place, and the, the, the naval forces have a large footprint. They have information systems, I mean, just business information systems. We got a logistics, we got to buy things. 
um, the expeditionary forces, they have pieces of equipment that are out there, and they're out there for years. Or they get a piece of equipment that just come off of a, a freight. Well, who's touched that equipment? We don't know. Did someone implant something on it? We don't know. Yes. What about that equipment that's been sitting out there for two years? Did everyone have their eyes on it the whole time? Probably not. So we need to be able to sort of come up with better tools to, self, to help diagnose these problems. I always look at it as that uh, is, uh, we, need more, more, we need more nurses. We need okay. more nurses. We need more, more thermometers. We need more uh, temperature changes, yeah, blood triage pressure. Level. Yes, exactly, the, the triage. How do you do the triage? When, because you can't call in a cyber surgeon every <laughs> single time uh, or a cyber doctor every single time. So how do you give the, the folks on the ground the ability just to check and make sure that things are cool? So I developed tools to help, uh, to do, like, to help do testing out there. And some of it is is offensive in nature, but it's to better test the defensive side. So it's like, hey, is this piece of equipment okay? Well, we need to be able to poke it in a bunch of spots and go, nope, there's some holes here. Call in the cyber surgeon. We mm -hmm. need to do, you know, we need to take this thing to the ER stat or uh, call in, the, you know, go to your general practitioner. And so- Are you a cyber surgeon? I am not a cyber no? surgeon at all. I am a, uh, I, I feel like sometimes I'm a, a great head nurse or administrator <laughs> okay. who helps, uh, who calls in the right cyber surgeons and doctors out there. And that's where a lot of folks that are, there's a lot of folks out there uh, who help out with that. That's excellent. That's excellent. So you kind of talked about a lot of things that you're doing and the Navy and Marine Corps is doing kind of how you, how you got to where you are while lead. What if there's like someone in college right now and they're like, how do I, like, you got there in a different route, a different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's no right or wrong way to get that, into cyber. That's, that's, you know, that's a great, great point. You know, I mean, there's, there's some folks who've taken the traditional route. And, you know, I know folks that are, are PhDs in, 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 sci in computer science. Uh, and we have just, I mean, we, we go back and forth and having great conversations. I, uh, I do a lot of my time studying offhand. Uh, about various different topics. Actually, I'm, I'm knee deep in the middle of a computer security book. But you know, mm -hmm. so there's no one way. You know, my An exciting way is, book, I'm sure. It it, it is for me. <laughs> uh, but there's no one way to get there, and it, and it takes all of us, uh, the, the guys, gals, folks who don't identify with either one of them. Uh, it takes all of us to really uh, come together from all different disciplines to look at the problems because. I've noticed with my background, I look at cyber physical security problems a little different than others. And because of some of my, uh, my different civil background, I, I know how some of these systems work and how the cyber systems interplay with them. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a collective problem. But I do think that there's some stuff that a 20 year old today, I really want them to, to just consider. Uh, Cause I think that are in 20 years from now, they're gonna be big problems and I wanna retire. Yeah, oh, for so, sure. Uh, so, so I want to know that these problems are being taken care of. You can't wear those shorts forever. I, you know, I'm, yeah. I, I have an elastic band, so oh, I, oh, I can so probably move, wear move these for a while. Yeah, that's my plan. So um, we need that next cyber dudes. Next cyber dude. Up and coming cyber dudes. Yeah, you know, or dudettes. Dudettes, dudettes, or cyber, I don't identify with dude or dudettes. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I think two things that come to mind. I, I believe 20 years or so in the future, nanotechnology is going to really take off. Uh, Bio-inspired nanotechnology. I can see bots being inside the human body that are giving indicators of when blood pressure is off, uh, sugar levels, all kinds of things. Wow. And just like we look at computers, laptops, or phones from mm -hmm. a security standpoint, that confidentiality, that integrity, that availability, we're going to need to think about how does that apply in even smaller times, in smaller scales like that. I don't want all of my, my, my information about my biometrics just being captured by somebody, nor do I want from an availability standpoint that uh, nanobot that's controlling the, the valve to my heart. To be some, hacked. To be hacked. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so I, I think that that's going to be a definitely a big problem. The other thing is there's going to be in some form or capacity fully autonomous vehicles. Um, I mean, that's we're just going to be- We're kind of already there. We're, we're, we're kind of there, right? I mean, but in small scales. But I, I'm seeing, you know, 20 years down the line, vehicles are talking to each other and, and they're working out the rules of the road engagement. Um, but, or you're going to even a more complicated situation. 
is when you have a human, you have humans and vehicles on the road, well, what, what happens then? Who initiates what? And the security around that's going to be important. I mean, from a technology standpoint, or even yes. from a policy standpoint, if, if I hack car A, it causes a crash. Well, who's, you know, whose responsibility was it to, to secure that vehicle? Uh, so so those, are, those are kind of the, the big problems I see in the next 20 years. Wow, that's interesting. That's something a lot of people don't think about. Thankfully, we've got cyber dudes like you to think about those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, and uh, I'm here to, to try to solve those 20 those problems today and, and tee up the ones for uh, the future, for those uh, future cyber, uh, cyber folks. Wally, it has been fantastic talking to you, mostly just checking out your awesome shirt. It, like, I mean, I, I, I got a short tie, but I can't compete with that pink shirt, man. <laughs> or salmon, maybe. I, fuchsia? I, I don't fuchsia? know. I, 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 I don't know. That's where, that's where we have other people to help us that's out. That's right, right, that's right. That's because we, we don't know. <laughs> so I really appreciate you coming on and kind of thank you. telling us about what's going on in the Navy and the Marine Corps in the cyber realm. Yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Definitely. And what do you think is going on? How, you heard, kind of heard Wally talk about what they're up to now, what we're up to in the Navy and Marine Corps. He talked about some things he saw the future going. Is that where you think it's going? You let us know. This is a great opportunity to say, Wally said a couple things. I'm like, ah, I think it's going another way. Let us know because you are the future. Waleed, like he said, he's not going to be here forever. He wants to retire. So we'll be looking to you for the help of, help of the future. Have a great one, everybody. See ya.